Hi, I'm Mark. This is Mark's Tech Blogs on YouTube, and today I'm going to be reviewing and giving you an in depth look at the Home Plus 6 app. Now, Apple's native home app is great, and it's got a lot better over the last few years. And personally, I'm a big fan of the interface and the way it divides up rooms and accessories, and also how you can easily set up automations right in there. There's also some great automations you can use out of the box, such as things like when the last person leaves and when the first person arrives. And actually, for the most part, it's the app I use most of the time for controlling everything in my smart home, because everything in my smart home is now in the Apple Home app. However, whilst there are some great automations, there are times when automations are a little bit limited. And a really good example of this is when it comes to presence sensors and motion sensors for things like lights. Now, of course, in the Apple Home app, you can create an automation that says when a presence detector detects presence, switch on a light. However, most of the time, you don't just want to do it when it detects presence, but you want to do it when it detects presence and the actual light level of your room is dim enough to make it worth putting on a light. Otherwise, you're just putting on a light and wasting electricity. Now, there is a way to achieve this natively using Apple's own apps, and this is done by converting your automation into a shortcut. It's once it's in shortcut mode, you can add some extra functionality. I'll be making a video on this, which will come out really soon. Now, this is a great way of achieving that, but setting it up is a little bit clunky, and therefore it is very much something for advanced users. Now, there is a free app that allows you to basically set up the same thing. And again, I'm going to make a full review of that app coming up soon, and that is the Eve app. Now, whilst Eve manufacture smart home devices, their app can actually bring in a whole range of devices from across your house, and in fact, everything in your Apple Home app. And they allow you to create those advanced triggers and conditions. Their app also has a Mac desktop app, which can do the same, which is fantastic for having a bigger screen when you want to set up some of these more complicated things for your home. Now, personally, whilst the Eve app is quite powerful, I'm not a big fan of the interface. Now, if you do want an easy solution with a nice interface, this leads you down the paid app route. And one of those is the Home Plus 6 app, which I'm going to get onto very shortly. Another option you'll come across is the controller for HomeKit app. Now, this does pack in a lot of features, but a lot of them are very similar to the Home Plus 6 app. Now, the big downside of the controller for HomeKit app is the price, and it's going to cost you £25 a year for a subscription or £99 for a lifetime license. For that reason, I recently picked up the Home Plus 6 app from Matthias Hoggarter. He is a developer from Austria whose name I have probably just butchered. Now, this app costs just £15, which actually isn't bad value, and this is a lifetime license. And this app supports iPhone and iPad and also an Apple Watch app. Unfortunately, there is no Mac app or any way to even use the app on a Mac screen. In fact, the only way to use this app on a Mac screen is to mirror your iPhone to your Mac using a new feature in the latest version of Mac OS. That's what I'm going to be using throughout this video to show you guys the app. Now, what I'm going to do throughout this video is walk you guys through the functionality of this app. I'm going to show you how to set up things, I'm going to show you how the interface works, and basically take you on a journey of configuring some things throughout my home. Now, you're going to see the dark mode version of this app throughout because my phone lives in dark mode, and I'm going to put chapters below because this is going to be quite a long video. At the end, I'm also going to share my conclusions and some downsides you're going to want to be aware of if you are thinking about picking up this app. Again, use those timestamps if you just want to skip to those before looking at the overview. So let's dive in and check out everything this app has to offer. Okay, so let's open the Home Plus 6 app. And when you first open it, you get this screen, which has got a kind of summary and automations and all the key things you want to do. At the top on the left, you've got something that says Homes. If you click it, you go back and see all of your homes. Now, I've only got one, so we're just going to see the one and click into it. And then this summary shows you all of the things in your home. So you've got a summary, you've got lights, you've got uh, outlets, uh, all sorts of different things and types of devices and some really useful things as well, like low battery and batteries. Scrolling down, you get automations and scenes and then all of the rooms in your house as well. And then right at the bottom, you can see zones. Uh, now we're gonna create a downstairs zone as part of this video. Uh, of course, you can do that in the Apple Home app as well. Uh, and everything here just syncs back to Apple Home. So clicking the cog, cog at the top gives you a few options, including the option to add an accessory, which works the same as adding one to Apple Home. You can create rooms, create zones, edit that view you can see, and some settings. So we're gonna edit the view. Um, and what we're gonna do is toggle off some of these things that I don't want and drag some of them around as well. So I'm gonna move bridges to start with because I don't wanna see that. And I'm gonna drag favorites all the way up to the top. Um, and you can move these around and just get the order that you want on your home screen. Uh, and I'm going to skip this video forward so you don't have to watch me juggling around with all of this and removing various things. 
Uh, you can, of course, also reorder rooms. Uh, you can't hide rooms. Hitting that red minus on the left hand side will prompt you to delete the room, which obviously we don't want to do. And you can reorder zones as well. So you can see we've got all of the items, all of the things we've got toggled off. We can add them back on if we want to. We've got all of our rooms in the order we want and then zones as well. So we just hit the X when we're done and there you go, that has all updated. So next thing we're gonna do is click into settings. So here you've got a few settings so you can transfer favorites onto your Apple Watch. You've got some share settings for sharing these with other people in your home. You've got the option to create backups and restore data, which is really useful. And these can be stored uh, basically anywhere. It's just a file you can export somewhere. Then you've got some widget options and some app icon options as well. We can choose your app icon. And then some options down here at the bottom so you can contact the developer, you can rate the app, you can tip the developer and see what's new. Uh, and then of course you can change your wallpaper as well if you want to. So we're gonna just click out of this uh, and what we're gonna do is we are gonna create that downstairs zone I said about. So we can click the cog at the top and click create zone. So firstly, we're gonna name this zone. So I'm gonna call it downstairs uh, and I'm gonna tick the rooms that are part of that. So that's my garden, that's my living room, that is my bedroom, uh, bathroom, sorry, my entrance and my kitchen and we hit save. And now if we scroll to the bottom, we've got the downstairs zone. So you can do things like asking uh, the assistant to turn off all of your downstairs lights, for example, now they're zoned. So let's go into automations. And first of all, you've got this new option called folders where you can organize your automations into different folders. Here's two I've previously created. So let's click into one of the automations here. These are all automations that are in my Apple Home app. And this lock one is particularly interesting. So this one is set to do something based on the state of a lock. And in the Apple Home app, it does it when the lock is unlocked. But here you can see it actually does some extra things behind the scenes. So in the Apple Home app, although it just says do this when the lock is unlocked, it actually also does it when the state of a lock is unknown or jammed. And what this automation does for me is it sets a different device to open. Um, so all I'm going to do in this one is I am going to pop it in the locks folder because it's an automation related to my locks. So let's actually create an automation from scratch and we're going to create one for a present sensor. So we're going to put it into a folder first and create a new folder called living room because that's where the present sensor is. So we can just tick that and then we're going to call this uh, living room presence uh, on. And then we can come down to this add event. So these are the things that trigger the automation. So uh, in Apple Home, of course, you can only choose one. So we're gonna start off by clicking add event and we're going to uh, look for a occupancy sensor. And we're gonna say when occupancy is detected. You can also see here, we've got options that we can't have in Apple Home as well for this device. So things like firmware update status. So we're gonna say when the living room occupancy sensor changes to yes, uh, and then we're gonna add something else in here as well. So we're also gonna look for the light level of the living room occupancy sensor, because this sensor from a car, the FB2, also has a light level monitor in, and we only want to turn on the light if there's uh, occupancy, but also if the light level is below a certain level, because there's no point turning on a light in a room that's got motion if there is enough daylight going on. So let's grab that light sensor there, and we're gonna choose current light level, and we're gonna say rather than equal to, we're gonna go for uh, less or equal to, and we're gonna go for, I think around 20 lux to start with, although we might tweak this as we go along. I'm also gonna stop at this point in the video uh, and say for a motion detection, you actually don't want both of these in this top section. I was wrong when I filmed this. Uh, you want the light level into that second part, so where it says under this condition. Um, because otherwise it's going to action for both of those rather than when both are true. So it's going to be an either or if you have them in this top section and not a both being true, which is what we want. Uh, so we can then add the accessories. Uh, so for example, I'm going to want some of my lights to trigger when this happens. So I'm going to click my living room light and I'm going to say that I want it to be a certain brightness and also a certain temperature as well. Now this is a ring on the Acara T1M, so I want it to be 100%. Um, and you can select as many or as few accessories as you want. And of course you can set each of them to different colors and different light levels and things like that. One of the really nice things is you can actually put in exact hex codes. 
So then we've got a nice automation here that says when a living room sensor detects occupancy uh, and a light level is below a certain level, then switch on these devices. And of course, you can also add scenes here if you wanted to. There's also a little option here, a moment to turn off the accessories after a certain amount of time, and also the option to execute once. So once this is executed, so once it's happened, it will never run again, it will become disabled. And this is a feature unique to this app. So once we're done, we can hit save. And of course, if we were actually setting this up in real life, we might then also add an automation that says when occupancy is no longer detected, turn off the light as well, um, which I'm not gonna do because it's just gonna make this video really long. Uh, and I'm actually gonna make another video talking you through how to get everything set up for an occupancy sensor. So we're gonna ignore this for now. So let me show you some other things in the app. So if you long press one of your scenes, you've got some options to do things like get information on it, rearrange it, move it, and really usefully duplicate it. So we can duplicate one and build something based on another if we want to, which saves getting loads of things together again. And of course you can tweak things within this duplicate if you want, but just use it as a starting point. Another thing we can do for scenes is we can change the icons and there's a nice little selection of icons we can choose from. This app also lets you change icons for rooms as well, which is really nice and which is a great way of just personalizing some more things in your house. Of course, if you go into the scenes view, you're also able to manage all of your scenes as well as triggering them. Uh, and you'd do a short press on the scene to run it and a long press to go into the options to edit it. So if we click info, we can see everything this scene does, which is actually just through the Akara app, so it doesn't appear that it does anything. Another nice feature is the favorites feature where you can click favorites at the top and anything that you add to that favorites appears there. So let's just go and add something to favorites. So let's go to the entrance and look at my doorbell camera uh, and you can see it exposes a few different things. There's a motion sensor um, and of course the camera itself. We can load up a feed if we want to. Uh, we can also long press on it and choose info. Um, and we can include it in favorites if we want to by toggling that that we see. And we can also see the additional features exposed to HomeKit as part of it. And of course you can delete it as well. So we're just gonna to toggle on the favorite for now. And I'll go back to favorites and show you that it has now appeared here, which is great. So of course, if we click into a few more of these things, uh, you can see all of your devices in particular categories. So cameras shows you all of your cameras, outlets shows you all of your outlets and so on and so forth. So if we click back into automations again, you can see that between filming parts of this, I've organized everything into rooms. And if we expand one of those rooms and just click into one with the automations, I'll just show you one more thing with automations. So if we go into this one, which is kitchen light on based on a motion sensor, you can see this is all set up properly and how I should have done the present sensor earlier on in this video. So we've got one trigger, which is when motion is detected in the kitchen. And then we've got a couple of things that uh, must be true. So the next two, you can either set as both to be true or either or. So I've said it's got to be between two certain times and also that the light level has got to be below a certain level. Only then will it turn on my kitchen light. This makes this a really useful automation because it only turns on my kitchen light between certain times when the light level is below a certain level. And this is how you'd set up anything uh, like a present sensor or things like that. So you want one trigger really, and then you can choose whether all the conditions below that must be true or one must be true. So let's just click out of that again. And I'll just show you some of the widgets you get with this. So if you long press your home screen, click edit at the top left and choose add widget, you can find the home plus widgets and you've got a few ones you can choose from. So we'll go for this nice little four one to start with. And you can edit this widget and basically choose any device in your home to show on this widget and you can use up to four. And of course, one of the really nice things is if you only choose two, it makes them nice and wide and kind of rearranges based on how many you've chosen. You can also go for a wide widget if you want to, where you can add up to eight. And then if we just scroll through the other widget options you get, so you can see about four one I told you just now, you've got some battery levels you can show and you can show battery levels as two, or you can show it four and have a nice wide one, or you can show tons of them on one display if you want to. And if we go back into the app, you can see there are some other tweaks to settings you can make about those widgets. So if we go back into settings and click into today's widgets, you can choose some of the different layout styles that you might want. So there you go, an in-depth look through the Home Plus 6 app. All in all, the Home Plus 6 app is a really great app. It has a nice simple interface and gives you some really nice features like the ability to put your automations into folders. And for more advanced users, I think it's a great addition to your home. However, for me, I have found a big issue with it and my HomeKit setup. 
And to explain that issue, I need to give you a bit of an explanation as to how Apple works with automations behind the scenes. And basically, the way automations work in the Apple Home app is when you create an automation, it creates a scene that goes with it. So for example, if you created an automation that at midnight every day, a certain amount of your lights would turn off, then behind the scenes, Apple will create a scene that grabs all of those lights you want to control as part of its automation and create a scene controlling those lights. Now in the native Apple Home app, that scene that is created is a hidden scene that you can't access and you'll never see, but it's there. Third party apps, however, do not have access to these hidden scenes, so they have to handle it in a slightly different way. The Eve app, which is a free app I mentioned earlier, actually makes you create a scene that you want to control with these advanced automations. This means rather than manually selecting which devices you want to control as part of automation, you have to select a scene, and therefore you might have to create a new scene at the same time. This is probably the best way to do it because you have complete control of the name of that scene. The Home Plus 6 app, however, controls this slightly differently and creates those scenes for you in the background. And as part of that, it assigns it a completely random name. That's why if you look at this screenshot, you'll see a whole variety of scenes in my Apple Home with kind of gobbledygook names. And as someone who works as a programmer, I'd have personally opted for creating a scene that's named around what you're naming your automation rather than coming up with these random GUIDs, but that's just how the developer's chosen to do it. But it does mean unless you go in and rename these scenes after it's automatically created them, your home view just looks a bit messed up. It doesn't look messed up in the Home Plus 6 app because they're hidden in the app. And that's the background really for the big issue that I found for my own home setup. And what I've found is that some of the scenes I have in my native Apple Home app are bumped off by the Home Plus 6 app. And typically these are scenes that I have exported to my Home app from the Akara app. So let me give you an example. In the Akara app, you can create a scene that does something with one of your devices. For example, maybe turn on your camera privacy mode. You can then export those scenes into the Apple Home app. This is great because it allows you to control functionality of Akara devices that doesn't appear natively in Apple Home app and tie into your automations. So for example, when the last person leaves, I switch off the camera privacy so it's filming. What I found with the Home Plus 6 app is that it causes these scenes to no longer appear in my Apple Home app. Now they still exist because I can't resync from the Akara app unless I delete them in the Home Plus 6 app, but Apple doesn't run them anymore. And for me personally, with what's probably quite an advanced setup, this makes the Home Plus 6 app completely unusable. Because what I don't want is for an app to break things that I've already got working in my Apple Home. And for that reason, I've actually opted to redo all of my automations using Siri shortcuts for more complicated ones. And I strongly suspect this issue actually lies with Apple rather than the developer of this app. And I also suspect that most people won't have any issues with it. But for me, it's a pretty big issue. And really, this leads nicely to talk about my verdict on this app. And I'd say that generally speaking, for the price, it's packed with features and it works really well with a really nice interface. And I think for most people, it's actually a really easy way of managing extra automations and things around your home. And there's also some nice extras like widgets as well. But I'd say it's probably not for advanced users. If you've had the same issue, let me know below because I'd be really interested to see if you found a solution. If you've got any questions about the app, do stick them below as well and I'll try and help you out if you're trying to look to buy it. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like. Subscribe to my channel to see other videos when they come out. And I've also got a link below to all of the smart home tech that I use in my home. All of that goes into the Apple Home app and all of those links on there are affiliate links that will go to Amazon in whichever country you're in. If you make a purchase using one of those links, it just helps this channel out. This isn't my full-time job, I just make these videos to help you guys out. I'll see you guys again soon.